Welcome back to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. My name is Barry O'Dell, and I am your host. Fulton County Gospel News is a bi-monthly publication of the Church of Christ in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. And if you'd like to learn more about our paper, just visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com, and there you can find all the information you'll need. If you would like to subscribe to the paper, it's always free. Uh, you can get it as a PDF in your email, or you can get a hard copy through the United States Postal Service. Let us know what we can do for you, and we'll be happy to add you to our mail list. Uh, we're all over Facebook. We have our public page, Church of Christ at Mammoth Spring. We also have a podcast page called Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. So you can like and follow those pages on Facebook. And also, if you've not yet subscribed to our Podbean channel, go to podbean.com on your computer or download the Podbean app for free to your Apple or Android device, and then you can become a follower uh, and a subscriber to Fulton County Gospel News. All right, so today we're going to continue our discussion of a uh, an expose of Reformed Theology and Calvinism. This is part three in our series in the Fulton County Gospel News paper, and in this edition we cover two different topics. Uh, the first topic uh, is an article that I wrote entitled Calvinism, From Heaven or From Men, and so that's what I'm going to read to you today, and perhaps we'll have a little discussion afterwards. Upon being questioned about the source of his authority, Jesus responded to the chief priests and elders, I also will ask you one thing, which, if you tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And that's Matthew twenty-one, twenty-four through 25 In matters of faith and practice, this is the question of questions. In the last edition of Fulton County Gospel News, it was noted that one of the leading voices of these religious errors, R.C. Sproul, openly acknowledged the following. And so the doctrine of total depravity describes and defines a particular view of original sin that had its roots in the teaching of St. August, Augustine. And remember that Augustine was the patron saint of the monastery where Martin Luther was re reared in the faith and where he taught at Wittenberg. He was an Augustinian monk, and also Augustine was the most revered mentor of John Calvin, so that the thinking of Augustine had an enormous influence in the shaping of the doctrine of the Protestant Reformation. Uh, in, the, in the paper, in the article, I provide a link where you can find that quote. Anyway, while Sproul passed away in 2017, he still speaks today about the origins of total depravity and original sin. As one of the, quote, leading voices of Reformed theology and Calvinism, it is not insignificant that we know that he knew the origins of this unjust and arbitrary system of belief. Is there any evidence, apart from Sproul's admission, that Augustine was the originator of this system? And, if so, what should we do with it? Also, if he is the originator of it, he did not live until the 4th and 5th centuries. Did every other student of Scripture miss something before he came along? In regard to the doctrines of Reformed theology and Calvinism and their connections with Augustine, one man wrote this, Within Christianity, theological truth is not primarily measured by its antiquity, but by its conformity to Scripture, logic, and then with a consideration of tradition. The 500-year-old theology of John Calvin was directly derived from Augustine, who strayed from the foundation of traditional patristic theology over a thousand years prior to Calvin. In his A Treaty on the Eternal Predestination of God that was published in 1522, John Calvin wrote this, In a word, Augustine is so holy with me that if I wish to write a confession of my faith, I could do so with all the fullness and satisfaction to myself out of his writings. John Calvin has been telling us in his own words and for 500 years the source of his doctrine. As one continues to read that document, Calvin repeatedly referenced Augustine. If you'd like a link to that, uh, there is a link provided in the uh, paper edition uh, of this article. Here is a simple question that must be answered. Reform theology and Calvinism. From heaven or from men? John Calvin, the man who systematized what we typically call tulip, told us 500 years ago that his own doctrine could have been summarized from the teachings of Augustine. R.C. Sproul, a leading voice in Reformed theology and Calvinism in the late 20th and early 21st century, told us the same thing. 
why not take them at their word? Who is Augustine, and why does it matter to us today? Augustine was a man who lived from 354 to 430 in northern Africa. He is often referred to as Saint Augustine. In his early life, he joined a sect known as the Manichaeans. Manichaeism was a religion that promised salvation through special knowledge, Gnosticism, and it also taught that the physical body is evil and the spirit is good. Manichaeism taught that man's free will was lost at the fall and he became totally depraved. Just a quick question. Does any of this sound familiar? Does it not sound Calvinistic? After ten years, Augustine left Manichaeism, but the doctrines they taught stayed with him and helped to form his erroneous theology. He would go on to write City of God from A.D. 413 to 426 and Confessions in A.D. 400 that speak of his childhood, his time in Manichaeism, and his, quote, conversion to Christianity. Here's the most important question to answer. Why does it matter? Who cares? In brief, it matters because the doctrines Augustine espoused, later to be expounded upon by John Calvin, who lived from 1509 to 1564, still impact people today. Have you ever heard of sinful nature? In regard to sin, have you ever heard anyone say, I just couldn't help it? Within the churches of Christ, we are being told that the only way we can overcome our sinful flesh is to get baptized and get the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you've heard or read these sentiments, you have heard or read Calvinism. Better yet, you've heard Augustinianism. While many are familiar with John Calvin, it is probably safe to say that not as many are very well acquainted with Augustine and his evolution of beliefs. This subject matters because there are things being taught from pulpits and classrooms that directly contradict the Word of God. Does Scripture teach that man has a nature that has been corrupted to the core by the sin of Adam? If such were the case, why was there no mention of it by God when the curses were pronounced? The serpent was cursed, Genesis three fourteen and 15. The woman was cursed in terms of childbirth and subjugation to the male, Genesis three sixteen. The man was cursed because the ground would bear thorns and thistles and his work would become more difficult. Ultimately, he would die, Genesis three seventeen through 19 The death of Genesis 2.17 was physical death, not a spiritual death that would lead to a corrupted nature in mankind at large. Adam and Eve sinned, were cast out of the garden, and were kept from the tree of life. Why? Let the Bible explain. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Genesis 3, 22-24 Not one thing was said about a change in the nature of mankind. In fact, Scripture says that God gives the Spirit, Ecclesiastes 12.7, that He is the Father of Spirits, Hebrews 12.9, and that sin and death is in direct relation to one's personal desires and giving in to them, James 1.13-15. It would be truly puzzling to hold to this system of belief and then try to teach what Jesus taught was necessary in order to become a part of the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 18.1-5, and Mark 9, 33 through 37. The doctrines of Reformed theology and Calvinism are admitted by their own adherents and leaders to have originated with Augustine. Why do so many pretend that it is a doctrine found in Scripture? Why, in light of passages such as Ezekiel 18 and Jeremiah 31, 27 to 30, do people hold to doctrines that mislead people to believe that all of human nature was spiritually corrupted by the sin of Adam. Why is it that some of our own preachers will misuse Romans three ten through 18 to berate Christians as nothing more than sinners who cannot help it because they have a sinful nature? In fact, Romans three nineteen tells us the target of those verses, those who are under the law. Too many 
are married to a theology rather than being devoted to the truth of Scripture. The doctrines of Reformed theology and Calvinism contradict the revealed will of God, and to hold to them in any form is to be out of line with Scripture. All right, so that's the end of that article. And like I said, that's from the September-October 2022 edition. This is part three of the paper uh, dealing with an expose of Reformed theology and Calvinism. I'm not going to add anything to this. I think this is pretty straightforward. When you have men like John Calvin and R.C. Sproul who tell us, listen, they're telling us, this doctrine originated with the teachings of Augustine. Let's just take them at their word. But, you know, it's, it's, it is a sad reality that within even within churches of Christ, we are hearing, and this is not new, but we've been hearing for some time things like sinful nature, sinful flesh. In fact, I got a response. I, haven't, I had an email response to this article from an individual uh, in regard to Romans 8.3, okay? Basically asking, well, if there is no such thing as sinful flesh, then why are we told that Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh in Romans chapter 8 and verse 3? Well, my point is, in this article, the, the Bible doesn't teach that, that flesh is sinful, and so we have to understand Romans 8.3 within its context. See, it's easy for somebody to critique an article without any consideration of what's already been written in previous articles and with pulling one verse out of context. Romans 8.3 does not teach that man has a sinful flesh. Paul has a point that he's making in lar- uh, by and large from Romans chapters 7 and 8, It's a contrast between the law of Moses, which sometimes is referred to as flesh, and the law of Christ, which is referred to as the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. In view of the fact that that man couldn't be justified by the law of Moses, Romans, uh, what is that, Romans chapter 3 tells us that, Galatians 2, 16 tells us that, but that man could be and can only be justified by the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that's why Christ came in the flesh. And and Paul talking about it in the terms of sinful flesh is the idea of, well, people in the flesh sin. And that's wholly different from teaching that we have a sinful flesh or sinful nature. So, you know, I, I didn't pay a lot of attention to that critique because it ignores context, both of my article and articles, but also of its meaning in the context of Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. Anyway, I hope this article has been beneficial to you. I hope that it opens your eyes a bit, because the fact of the matter is we are hearing things within Churches of Christ of, you know, you need the gift of the Holy Spirit to overcome sin. And by the way, that's not what Acts 2.38 says. It says nothing of the sort. And you will not find any passage in the New Testament that says you need to get the Holy Spirit so that you can overcome your sinful flesh. That is not a biblical doctrine. And frankly, that, that belief is, is Calvinistic. It's Reformed. It's not biblical. All right, I guess that's enough. Okay, so thanks again for listening today. Again, if you've not yet subscribed to the paper, get a hold of us. Uh, MammothSpringChurchOfChrist.com is the website. Let us know what we can do for you. The subscription is always free. Uh, like us, follow us on Podbean, find us on Facebook, uh, Fulton County Gospel News podcast page, and also Church of Christ at Mammoth Spring Facebook page. Thanks again for listening today, and I will catch you on the next episode of Fulton County Gospel News Podcast.